The treatment of advanced breast cancer historically has relied largely on the use of sequential single agent chemotherapies. And this is for patients who either are steroid receptor negative and HER2 negative, or uh, patients who have had prior endocrine therapy um, who then need to move on to chemotherapy having become endocrine resistant. And for the HER2 population, uh, the chemotherapeutics are usually used in combination with uh, anti-HER2 agents. Um, for a brief time, perhaps in the 90s and early 2000s, there was some enthusiasm for combinations of chemotherapy and advanced breast cancer. And there were regimens even approved by regulators uh, along these lines. For example, the docetaxel capecitabine combination is an approved regimen. Uh, uh, gemcitabine in combination with paclitaxel is an approved regimen. But by and large, the combination use has uh, fallen by the wayside, except in cases of severe symptomatic disease burden, uh, where it may be appropriate to use combinations. But otherwise, sequential single agents are as effective and less toxic than the combination. So we're looking at sequential single agent use of chemotherapy um, uh, one after another, um, often trying to change from one class of chemotherapeutic to another, trying to avoid the uh, cross-resistance mechanisms uh, within a particular class. Chemotherapy is still a very important mainstay of our treatment for metastatic breast cancer patients. Uh, across all of the various subtypes of, of breast cancer, and I think it will stay there in the, in the future. Uh, chemotherapy really is targeted itself. We're going to learn more and more as time goes on that certain chemotherapy agents are going to be best for certain subtypes of breast cancer. For example, do you know that there can be a very small percentage, about 10% of uh, first line only, triple negative breast cancer patients who go into a complete response with mainly cisplatin or carboplatin to a lesser extent and will stay there indefinitely. It's been published by Stephen Isakoff in JCO, but we all have patients in our practice if we've been just utilizing the platinum-based regimens in triple negative breast cancer, but it's a first-line phenomenon. It doesn't happen in second line, and it's because the cisplatin is targeting a defect. It's a targeted agent in some triple negative breast cancers, targeting the inability of some of them to repair double strand breaks. So it's just the perfect selective agent. Um, well, what about some of these um, uh, breast cancers that are highly invasive, you know, for example? They are using their microtubules for metastasis and for highly invasive nature. Maybe those aren't really going to respond that well to platinum-based agents, DNA-damaging agents. So let's utilize antimicrotubule agents for those, for those patients, you see? Um, and what about pa uh, cancers that are all about proliferation? Um, when you are blocking uh, the estrogen receptor, for example, and now you have utilized a serial number of options against the estrogen receptor in ER-positive breast cancer, and you've been really inhibiting that PI3 kinase pathway, perhaps with Everolimus, and now the cell is the cancer is resistant, and you've got bone liver metastasis and ER positive disease, but it's highly proliferative. Capecitabine is an anti-proliferative agent. It's really an S phase agent. It's very, very, very good. But again, it's really focused on on um, cell proliferation of those cells. So our chemotherapies really are targeted. We haven't really studied them in such a way as to really understand which subsets of breast cancer they're best suited for. But in practice, you know, you kind of figure that out over time, you know, which, which of the various subtypes of breast cancer respond to which different chemotherapy agents. An example of why we will always really need chemotherapy, uh, in addition to the fact that sometimes it'll, it'll cure people, like with cisplatin first line, triple negative breast cancer will, you know, cure a very, very small percentage of those patients um, is that in some situations, such as HER2 positive breast cancer, HER2 amplified disease, um, you really need the chemotherapy in addition to the inhibitors of HER2 in order to really get very massive cytoreduction. Certainly the targeted agents such as um, trastuzumab or pertuzumab and the combination are definitely effective, but 
they really dialed down the survival signal and to some extent the proliferation of the cancer, but to really cause that strong apoptotic stimulus and really reduce that tumor burden, you need chemotherapy. And um, the, the chemotherapy, such as uh, platinum-based agents, et cetera, they will try to repair their DNA, and then the anti-HER2 target agents will stop the um, repair of the DNA, for example. So there's, there are synergies between the chemotherapy and some of our targeted agents, not all, but some of them, and we will never want to give up on those synergies.